And we're live. Hey everybody, welcome to the Knitter's Closet. We are episode five. That's ten. Five. <laughs> and today, as you can see, we have a special guest. This Hello. Is, this is my friend Beth. I'm Melissa. You can find me on Ravelry as Darwin Kitty and on Instagram as Melissa K Plans. And we still haven't set up the um Ravelry group yet, but that will be live in the next day or two as soon as I can get on a computer and do it. And um, Beth, how can we find you on social media? I'm Beth, and I am MD Quilter on Ravelry as well as on Instagram. Beth has been a good friend of mine for about 10 years now, and she is one of the most prolific knitters <laughs> I have ever met, as you will see today, because her FOs and whips are going to out shine mine in every way shape or form because when Beth does something she goes big or she goes home um, Beth also test knits right now you've got a test knit going for Andrea Mallory I have two I have one for Andrea Mallory and one for Caitlin Hunter and Caitlin Hunter and that's a Boylan Knitworks of the Sunset Highway the Swan, Chick, Show. Swan Show yeah yep of that kind of fame yeah so Beth, tell us your fiber story, as Chrissy Glass would say. <laughs> well, I started knitting when I was uh, about eight years old. I took an after-school class, and my very first project was a baby blanket. Um, it was a basket weave, so I learned knitting and purling, and then just kind of took off from there. I used to make baby blankets for friends, scarves, that sort of thing. And then I found quilting when I was about 19, and knitting kind of fell by the wayside. Hence the knit user <laughs> yes, I used to be an avid quilter, <laughs> and then uh, in 2010, I decided I wanted to knit socks again, so I took a class at Clover Hill up in the Baltimore County area, and learned how to knit socks, and that started me right back into knitting, <laughs> and this time, serious yarn collecting. Um, my, my stash is insane, and <laughs> I think my husband would like it if it was smaller, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so just to point out, if, if Beth and the yarn hoarder got together, they could probably open their own yarn store. Oh, couple probably. <laughs> and stock it for a year without yep. restocking. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but so I live vicariously through Beth whenever she purchases yarn. And um, so what are some of your favorite yarns? Um, right now, probably the one that I knit with the most is Desert Vista Dye Works. And um, she's out of Arizona and she specializes in self-striping yarns. And I knit a lot of self-striping socks. They're and, so fun to knit. Yes, they are. And she does a knit-along every year where you win prizes. It's one of those knit-alongs where it's not that you're in a drawing for prizes. You know what your prizes are and what you're definitely going to get. Nice. So I knit at least one pair of socks every month using Desert Vista Dye Work socks. Um, I also love Lolo Did It. <clears throat> She's in the um, Las Vegas, Nevada area. Um, she just has fun speckly yarns, uh, a lot of themed yarns. I'm a Walking Dead fan, so she does a whole series of Walking Dead. Is she the one that did the hippo? She does the hippos, and now she's doing yetis. She did hippos for holidays, Yeti. and now she has yeti yarns that are traveling. The first yeti yarn was Yeti Goes to Hogwarts. Oh my goodness. I'll yes. have to try those. I yep. haven't tried either one of those yet. Yeah, um, and then... Kind of my gateway drug into Indie Dyers was Fresh from the Cauldron. <laughs> I remember those days. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she's down in Florida. And she, I started with her because she has, um, she, she was a um, kind of a nerdy type of person and dyed True Blood themed yarns. And I was an avid True Blood watcher and reader. So I had to get my Eric Northman yarn as much as I could. <laughs> And her, her updates were insane to get her yarns, but now it's kind of calmed down so you can actually buy her yarn. And then I also love Malabrigo. Um, that's, that's one of the... Um, <laughs> we're big fans of Malabrigo. Absolutely. Um, our local shop, Knits and Pieces, they carry a very large selection of Malabrigo, so yes. I tend to knit a lot um, using Malabrigo. It would be, Malabrigo would be my desert yarn. If I could have the whole line, not just, you know, one of it, but right. if I could have the whole line, it would be mm -hmm. Malabrigo because I'm, I'm very happy with them. Absolutely. So my favorite yarns, I don't um, have as much experience with <laughs> Indie Dyers as Beth does, um, but I love Malabrigo. 
I love Miss Babs. Um, I love her Yowser colorway, uh, Yowser line, and then the colorways are amazing. And then um, my very first um, indie dyer was Claudia hand paint. Claudia hand paint. Claudia's hand paint. Yeah, Claudia's hand paint. And um, I remember the color was Hawaii, and it's very, it was very Hawaii-ish. Actually, I think it's in my my sock bin somewhere, my, my <laughs> mini spin right now somewhere. It's the blues sure. and the greens. Yeah. The teals. So, um, what is your favorite completed project? I think my number one favorite is my What the Fade by Andrea Mowry. I love the brioche. <laughs> I'm a serious brioche addict nowadays. Um, and it's just so squishy. And this is knit with Hedgehog Skinny Singles. And it's Look at the just colors huge. on this. I bought a kit from Hedgehog when it was first coming out. This was a mystery that Andrea did a couple of years ago. And I chose to get the colors that she did hers in. So mine is, I'm kind of twinsies with Andrea right now. Nice. Um, and I just love this shawl. You guys Nice cannot, and cozy. It's, I don't know if the color is coming through on these, but the, look at the pop of it, like highlighter yellow. Yeah. It's so pretty. And I love Hedgehog. They're so, yep. they're so smushy. <laughs> Yep. And then I also, um, several years ago, our knit group that Melissa and I are part, were part of, it's kind of disbanded a little bit now, but it seemed like all the gals were having babies. So I decided to knit sweaters for three of the, the girls. Yes. And they were coordinating sweaters. Um, they were all from the Karebe Kid pattern that's by Justina Larkowski. <clears throat> and I knit them all out of Knit Picks um, Swish DK. They are the cutest little clients. Yeah. And I have a picture that, um, that we'll yeah, insert. We'll, we'll insert it. Yeah, <laughs> of all three of them. They, <laughs> they were the same pattern, same size, but I took three different colors and intermingled them um, between the three. Yeah, and that's a good pattern because I can tell you, it fit Nora when she was little. I think you knit it right around the time Nora was about one. Yeah. Because the smallest size yeah. was the um, 12 month size. Yeah, and yeah. hers actually still kind of fits her now. Yeah. Now it's like a, a cropped yep. cardigan with mm -hmm. like three quarter length sleeves or yeah. bracelet cuff sleeves, yeah. but it actually still fits like in the shoulders, which yeah. is amazing. And it's an easy pattern and yeah. a lot of fun to knit. It's super cute. Yeah, and then my other favorite is I knit a brickless by um, Martina Bem. And the fun thing about this one is I spun the yarn for it. Um, I, I took. Yeah, I took two fibers from a friend of mine and spun them together and then knit the brickless and gave it to my friend Tina, who now lives in Minnesota. It was a swap, and she and I are both pink girls, and it's very pink, and I'll send a picture of that also to Melissa, because it lives in Minnesota now, so if, I don't have it. If it's pink, Beth will buy it. Yes. <laughs> She's convinced that if it's pink, it will work better. Yes. So, And I can't blame her. It's Sometimes the truth. Sometimes I'm that way, too. <laughs> Beth also weaves, too. She has a I rigid... Do. And Ashley? I have a um, Cricut um, by Shocked uh, Rigid Heddle in the 15 inch. So she yeah. weaves, spins, and yeah. knits. And my, my wheel I spin on an Ashford Traveler. And I also have a Heavenly Hand Spinner um, Vespa e-spinner. So. That's a little mechanical one. So yep. It's on the... Yeah, it's electric. <laughs> that one looks so cool. Yeah. I got to get you to bring that one day so I can try it. Yeah, one day. <laughs> she has digs her room. Yeah. Things get buried. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and so we've asked you what your favorite project was. What's your least favorite that you've knit and why? <laughs> My least favorite, I knit a pair of socks years ago using a colorway from Lorna's Laces. Nothing against Lorna's Laces. Um, the colorway was called Franklin's Panopticon. And the way that my gauge worked, it flashed so horribly. <laughs> And it was one of those teal and lime green and brown colorways, mm. which I love, but the way it flashed was just disgusting. Just <laughs> it's like my uh, your... rainbow socks. Mm -hmm. I had a, a set of rainbows. I think that was Brown Sheep Company. Yes, Brown Sheep Company. And it was a rainbow, and it was a beautiful rainbow in this game, but my yeah. gauge threw it off. And, I think oh. that colorway was called Rock and Roll, because I, I had a skein of it, too. Yeah, it might have been. 
Beth, when I can't remember my yarn, remembers my yarn. <laughs> we like to tell Beth she's a savant when it comes to yarn and colorways because if we bought it or talked about it in her presence, she usually remembers it. And I it's try. Amazing. She's like a walking, talking yarn dictionary. That's because I love yarn. Yeah. <laughs> So do I, but I have a memory of a goldfish, which is why I write show notes. <laughs> That's why you need to knit the Casapinka goldfish memory shawl. I know, except I don't knit shawls these days. <laughs> <laughs> Turn that into a sweater. Maybe maybe I'll knit it and then I'll do it as a giveaway for somebody. There you go. On the, on the Ravelry That's group. a good idea. We have more members after. Very good idea. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into some yarny goodness. Do you have any FOs today? I do. I Yay. do. Imagine that. Well, I brought with me my couple of my most recent FOs. This one is from Casapinka, and it's a shawl. The pattern's called Yonda Window, and it's a mosaic shawl, and it's asymmetrical. And I knit this for um, Camp Loopy uh, for June, and the colorways are Ethereal Fibers Nebula Sock. That's the variegate in Rusty Unicorns. And the um, the yellow, name. yeah, the yellow is from Magpie Fibers in her swanky shot sock, and the colorway is Second Banana, and they're both eighty ten ten um, cashmere uh, merino cashmere. I was gonna nylon. say this has got to have cashmere. It, it does. So it does. Soft. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's so soft and smooshy. It's a nice, fun pattern. Um, super easy to knit. Great um, gateway into mosaic if you've never knit, knit mosaic before. So I have um, like almost no FOs this week. My daughter um, asked me for a little bag for her rocks. She collects rocks, she's four. Um, so anything small she really collects. And I knit that up in a Knit Picks Felici Rainbow. And I'll post a picture because I don't have it right now. It's currently sitting somewhere full of rocks. <laughs> Um, but I also did some preemie hats. This is my little preemie hat bag here, and they're not actually in that, so hold on. I stuck them in a different bag. All your exploding TARDISes. All my little exploding TARDISes. I think Tracy made these for me. Yep. Yeah. Or are they TARDI? Well, I don't know. I don't know what the plural <laughs> of TARDIS is. Because TARDIS is an acronym. That's true. So, it's time and relative... I'm such a bad doctor. Dimension oh. in space. Time I wouldn't know because I don't like Doctor Who. Space. Oh my gosh, I would have been <laughs> such a bad Doctor Who fan. So I've been knitting these little preemie hats to get rid of some of my scraps. And no, I haven't weaved in my end yet. I'm pulling a yarn hoarder there. <laughs> so I got this one in a little fingering weight. And this is uh, Koiku. And it's in color 124P. It's a very original name. And this is same colorway I just held this double for a worsted weight hat nice so those are it's amazing how different the colors look mm -hmm. like side by side yep. when they're knit double and yep. single so those are my only finished projects this week <laughs> I have a few more. <laughs> I've been slacking. And and look, Beth and I started knitting preemie hats at the same time. So I want you to see this is I'm a pretty fast knitter. Like compared to some people, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm pretty fast. Like you, especially when it comes to stocking it, I just whiz through it. This is how much I've knit, and this is how much Beth has knit. I have eight <laughs> cute little ones, and they're all from the same skein of yarn. I know, and I love that. I don't know if you can see that. This one's my favorite. I yeah, like, I like that I one like too. Them. Oops, now they're all gonna fall down. I like the pink and the blue. Look at I also like the completely pink one. Because if it's pink, it's better. There you go. Uh, the yarn is Loops and Threads. I got it at Michael's. Um, it's the Kai base, and it's 100% acrylic worsted. Um, these are going with me. Um, I'm going on a retreat in September down in Crossville, Tennessee, um, called Into the Wool. And um, the one of the organizers of the retreat, Dana, who owns Unwind Yarn Company, she... Um, <clears throat> collects NICU noggins um, during the retreat um, to donate to the Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, one of the hospital's NIC NICU um, units because her daughter spent some time in the NICU when she was born. Aww. So she likes to give back. That's great. So for every preemie hat that we turn in, we get a point. There you go. And the points go towards prizes. 
<laughs> so when there's prizes involved, oh. I start a knitting campaign. <laughs> yes. Beth loves to knit for prizes. I do. Beth Challenges. Yeah. Um, um, imaginary points are a great thing. Cows. She loved cows. I love cows. I do. Whereas I've never completed a cow successfully. <laughs> Beth has probably completed dozens, a gajillion. Upon, dozens upon dozens. Yeah. yeah. And the pattern that I'm using for this is the um, free top down preemie, um, yeah, free top down preemie hat pattern by Cece Allman of Java, Java Pearl Designs. Uh, she also has the geeky, geeky, I can't say this word, Geeky Girls Knit podcast yeah. with her daughter <laughs> Dammy. Yeah. Oh yeah, my pad, my my pattern mm -hmm. is the um, the preemie one is the preemie baby beanies. That's the fingering weight one. And then right. the worsted weight one is the half pint preemie hat. And I'll put that down in the scrolling by as we write Great. those. So. And my last FO are, I mentioned that I do this um, Desert Vista Dye Works um, sock knit along every year. Uh, she calls it a sock club. This is the fourth annual. And my June socks are finished, of course, in June. So I brought those with me. They look so Christmassy. I know. They're kind of um like they're kind of the sock monkeys wearing a Grinch suit. Oh. Kind of. But they're actually called Central Park. They are um, inspired by the logo of Central Park from Friends. Oh, there you go. And I love look at her sock blockers. Yeah. Where are your sock blockers from? My sock blockers came from the Hello. Loopy U. Hello, um the loopyu.com in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado fantastic online um, yarn store and fabric store so and I do, do their fabric? challenges every year yeah they do fabric too yeah they did they started fabric that's dangerous several years ago so yep that's all my FOs that's, that's all I got finished that's actually a small amount of FOs for Beth I know I was hoping to have two more done just didn't <laughs> happen my um my whips have been pretty much the same, but I did get a lot of progress done on several items. So I'll start with socks. Beth, by the way, is the person that taught me to knit socks, two at a time, two at a time, toe up. I am. And um. And now I don't knit them that way. And now she yeah now she doesn't <laughs> knit them that way. She knits them on a nine inch circular, which yep. boggles my mind. So <laughs> I actually got I think the last time I I uh, we podcast. My socks were about here. So I've mm -hmm. actually turned the heel and the heel flap. Ooh. So now I've got the heels on the feet. Yay. And um, I th the recipient said she wanted short socks. So I've only got a little bit left to go before they're actually finished. Although part of me wants to knit the rest of the ball because I just don't want any more leftovers these days. But Oh, my. That would be a lot You can of knit yourself a I could knit myself a pair because she wears the same size shoe really yeah. as me. Um, I could knit a second pair for me, but I, again, or you can use them socks. as a stripe in a sweater. Or... Yeah, I probably will. Or, you know, knit some more hats. Yep. Um, and I see you're using your signatures. I am. These are my 2.25 millimeter signature needles. My sure beaking ones. Oh, and this, the deep stash that, uh, I had mentioned in the last podcast, we actually found out, I found out what it was because mm -hmm. it turns out I had actually stashed it on Ravelry. This is the Pagewood... Um, farm and I think the color was plum. I don't have that one written down. <gasps> oh no. Okay. <laughs> I got all excited and didn't write it down. It is Pagewood Farm um, and it is a superwash. I was right about that. Yep. I was because that's all I ever bought when I was exactly right. A baby knitter. Yep. So that's my one um, whip. And what have you got going? Oh my. <laughs> So I mentioned that I do the um, the Camp Loopy challenge. So this is July's Camp Loopy. I have one repeat left to go. It's in my toffee colored fringe field bag. Yes, when I go big, it, when I do something, it's go big or go home. So this is one of four fringe <laughs> field bags I have. But all of my fringe bags are the more limited edition. So this is the original toffee that was discontinued. Um, they've since reintroduced it with a different canvas. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is my sizzle pop. I love the colors <laughs> in this one. This is, so this month for Camp Loopy, we were supposed to challenge ourselves. 
And sometimes it's hard for me to find something to challenge myself with because I've challenged myself so much over the years. So I decided to do a very intricate brioche pattern. And so she's this, not kidding. This is very intricate. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. I love that the back is just as interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the pattern is by Leslie Ann Robinson. Um, she is Nick Graffiti on Instagram. And the yarn is Yushatita in her Merino singles. That's a, um, she's a Dutch dyer. And it's 100% superwash Merino. And the light color is Vanilla Sky. And the darker brown is Havana. And it is a dream to knit with. Yeah, it feels nice. It really does. I love brioche. It's so, so squishy. Yep, so I'm about halfway through the last repeat right now, so I just have to do that, and then a short little border, and it'll be done. Hopefully, it'll be done today. And have you memorized the pattern? Um, pretty much. It's it's a 16-row <laughs> repeat, and if you are familiar with doing brioche, each row is actually two rows, because you have to knit it twice. You have to knit each color across, so... It's 32 rows, basically, that I'm knitting. That she's memorized, guys. Memorized yeah. a 32-row pattern. Yep. Yep. I told you. She's prolific. <laughs> and I'm knitting this on my size 4, U.S. size 4, uh, 3.5 millimeter signature, signature needles. This is the first pair of signatures I ever bought. And I bought them when I was going to knit um, the Ecuador during Nanny Suemo one year. Um, but I wasn't doing Nanny Suemo. I was just doing a um, challenge to knit a sweater in a month um, for one of the groups I was in because I wanted to win a skein of yarn that Fresh from the Cauldron died specifically for this knit along. I didn't win, but I knit the sweater. Which it, which is odd because Beth usually knits <laughs> at, wins everything. I do tend to win a lot, don't She's I? She's got the most incredible luck of any person I've I ever I just enter met. a lot but only tell them about a few things. <laughs> well, maybe, that, maybe that's the trick. It could maybe be. That, maybe that's the trick. Yeah, so, um, but that was, that was Hohi Locatelli's Ecuador sweater mm -hmm. that I knit out of Knit Picks Imagination in the Unicorn colorway. And that was that alpaca. Was that that big Very one? splitty. It's, no, it's the, um, it's like all the pastel colors. And it's like knit in a circle almost. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was crazy. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm gonna Go ahead. have other FOs. Good. Um, we'll take turns. Yep. So I've got another preemie hat in the works. And this one's a half pint preemie hat on 3.75 millimeter shit signatures. I Beth has the whole set of signatures. I do. Um, I do not because I have like a boatload of needles already. And so it's just And the I, problem with that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I keep saying it's like, oh, it's too many, it's too many. And then I inevitably run out of a needle that I need. Yep. Because I never have enough of the size I need. But, yeah. So every year at Maryland Sheep and Wool, I usually treat myself to a pair of signatures. Although I think this year I got three pairs. I don't remember. Two or three pairs this year. Because I, I got the three you. sock blockers. I wasn't your keeper then. You weren't. <laughs> I know. It's so weird. I know. Kristen so, was your keeper that day. Kristen was my keeper. I mean, she won't remember all my yarns as much. <laughs> She might. I don't know. She might surprise me. Um, so I'm knitting a little preemie. This is now my become my my preemie knitting bag hat. So I've got all these little minis in here. Oh, I should throw that one. <laughs> I'm running out of teals. I should throw that one in my <laughs> my bag. <laughs> I'm running out of teals and blues. I never thought I'd say I was running out of minis for this blanket, but um, and I've been working on the blanket. I'll show you guys that in a few minutes. Go ahead. Okay. You're next. We'll take turns. Next one is um, I am knitting my July Desert Vista Dye Work socks. This bag is from Nanette Wake Studios, and she um, hand weaves That's pretty. all of the fabric for the bags. And she puts these lovely zip zipper pulls with um, stitch markers. Lots of bling. That's pretty. Yeah. Here, let's see. It's lots of fun. Pretty, and then this yep. hand woven, it's super pretty. Yeah, and it just happens to match my project. 
Oh, Beth likes to coordinate bags if she can when she's knitting. And it's so fun to watch her coordinate them. Yeah. Ooh, that's a lot. So this is the finished sock. And this is Desert Vista Dye Works in her Viso base, which is 7525 uh, Merino Nylon. And this is her Zombie Frap colorway. And this was inspired by Starbucks Zombie Frappuccinos. And it's just a plain vanilla sock. Yep, it's a plain vanilla sock, knit top down or cuff down with a heel flap and gusset. I follow um, Susan B. Anderson's um, recipe called How I Make My Socks. It's a very inventive name, mm -hmm. but it's a great recipe. And um, I also found a um, oh an alteration that um, takes it to the stitch count that I use. So I'm, I'm interrupting yep, Beth. That's okay. Look how cute this little progress keeper is. It's a little pink fox from Truffle Shuffle oh my on Etsy. Goodness. Actually, I think she just launched her own website. He's so cute. Yeah, she does. She does the best little miniatures. In lots of different colors, and she did a pink update at one point. Oh, man. I was in my so glory. So Beth bought the whole shop. I bought what I could. I already <laughs> had the pink unicorn. She does unicorns. She does yetis. A pink yeti is a very interesting thing to see as well. Um, she does foxes. She does whales, octopus, oh all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yep. For so this is where I am, and I, I so knit on a, my nine-inch So you circles. have a hoe. I have a hoe. A half-finished object. I was hoping for a foe. But it's a hoe. It's a hoe. <laughs> yep. And I'm going to keep this out because I might knit on that. Yeah. While no we're talking. Way. So I worked some this week on some of my sweaters. I finally split for the sleeves on my worsted boxy hokey locapelli. Mm -hmm. um, so yay on that. So my one side. This thing is so massive. <laughs> And I saw that... You gotta love these. I know. There's th th these... Positive ease sweaters. Po positive ease sweaters. And I'm only knitting the... I knit the large size because mm -hmm. you're supposed to measure your arm, not your right. your bust size. So I am knitting the large, but I've got about this much, it's about three inches mm -hmm. of uh, back and forth. And I know. You don't like purling. I, I don't like purling. And I learned, <laughs> I learned to knit backwards, mm -hmm. but it messes with my gauge. Yeah, it will affect the tension. So, and I can kind of tell when I was knitting backwards on certain stitches. Like, you can kind of see it. And mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, I'm not going to do that. Because the, it would have been one thing if I'd been doing that from the start. Right. But because I knit in the round and stock in it for so long, I'm yeah. like, hold stitch. Uh, Easy fix. Yeah. But, um, so... And I'm sure it'll block out, but it just, it was throwing me off, so yeah. I didn't do it. So I did get a little bit done on the worsted boxy. I did watch... It's a beautiful um, color. Yeah, it's the Cascade 220 Superwash. Uh, yep. And I think, like, the color's like 1949. Yeah, they have nice, nice in, inventive, inventive colorways, colorways, too. Let's see. I have my ball. Yeah, 1949. Look there at you that. go. I remembered something. Um, And I was, I did watch... Um, Fat Squirrel Speaks, that's mm -hmm. Amy Beth. She podcasts. And she came back from SSK. Yep. And she tried on the Worsted Boxy in the fingering weight version. Yep. And that was actually the one. original Boxy. Was it fingering was. weight. It's, yeah. Um, bottom up, fingering weight. And then she came out with the Worsted version. And she also has a V-neck now that's top Ooh. down that I'm going to be knitting. Ooh. That I have a sweater quantity of Leading Men Fiber Arts in the Love You to Pieces colorway that I had custom dyed for me last year. Nice. Specifically for that pattern. I, um, yeah, I, God love her. She's going to do the, the, the fingering, fingering weight. weight version. And to me, it, that is just insane an amount of um, knitting. Because this is an insane amount of knitting. And... One of the whips sitting over it. here is basically a fingering weight boxy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's one sweater. Do you, what else do you have? Okay, next I am working on Andrea Mallory's rose cardigan. At the shop, we are doing a fade along right now. Yeah. So you could pick any pattern that you want. It didn't have to be a sweater. It could be, um, you know, it could be a hat. It could be a scarf, a shawl, whatever you want, as long as there was fading involved in it. So I chose the rose cardigan. This is my football fun bag, don't ask, um, by Rick at Whimsy Stitches. 
And well, I don't know if you look far away because they alternate. It almost looks knitted. Yeah. If you look at it. But they're far away. fun little footballs. They're fun little footballs. They are. And I am using the KFI Indulgence Sport. We so have these are we do. <laughs> My daughter just can't, can't see her. She's on the app. She, but she's standing yeah. behind the camera. So now we have an um, Exactly. Yeah, I didn't know uh, I know you guys noticed, obviously, we are not in the closet today because Beth and I cannot fit in the closet together. No. <gasps> there so she we is. Can, there Hello, she is. Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> so all right so oh, this oops so this is knit in quadrants so i have finished one quadrant this is a, i love this mustard yellow yeah that pop of mustard yellow is really pretty so these are the the skeins that i'm using and when these first came into the shop i bought them from knits and pieces of course I had no idea that they would knit up the way that they're knitting up. So this is that lighter yellow. Wow. And this is the other one here. I mean, I just can't believe it. So and, this and, is one quadrant. And it looks like she's holding it backwards. But it is reverse stockinette. It, it's reverse stockinette. It has a little cable so, detail yeah. along the shoulder seam. So you knit... Two backs, two fronts, and then you seam them together. Luckily, Karen, the owner of Knits and Pieces, is going to help me seam because that's one thing I've never done. Really? I've never seamed before. I, I seamed the sleeves of that partly cloudy um, up at the tops, mm -hmm. and I didn't do really well, which is funny because I, I sew, so you would think right. I'd, I'd be okay with seaming stitches because it's basically sewing, mm. um, and I didn't, I didn't like it at all. But uh, Karen, the shop owner... Um, loves to seam, apparently. <laughs> she's a master mattress stitcher. Yes. So, she's so kind of cool. the colorways on this, this one is called Iridescent Memoir, and then it fades into Ibiza Royale, and then into English Rose, or, yes, English Rose, and then Bouquet Dior. Nice. And I'm working on my second quadrant now. I've just faded in the third color. So, that's where that one stands. You'll see, I really like Andrea Mallory's patterns. I think she's a wonderful designer. She is. This pattern is a little more on the expensive side. It is an $8 pattern, but yeah, sure. I'm not gonna give away the special sauce here, but she includes these checkbox checklists checklists y'all because it's Amazing. one of those while you're doing this at the same time you'll do this and at the same time you'll do this and at the same time you'll do this patterns and you're changing colors so she gives you these checklists that tell you what you're doing in each row and then you just check it off as you do the rows and she does it for every size and two, two of each for each size because two quadrants are identical until you get to the shaping and the other two quadrants are identical until you get to the shaping. That's, that's some so high level type A pattern writing people. <laughs> right. And the pattern is like 30 pages long. I only printed what related to my size. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just amazing. That's crazy. Yeah. So, it's a good one. Okay, so my only other F, well, no, I have two other FOs. I put sleeves on my tin can knit sweater for Joe. So I finished the bottom last podcast, and now I have the start of sleeves, mm -hmm. which Beth helped me do because the pattern says at the same time. Um, and I was just going to knit them one at a time and just mark my increases, but then I was like, is there a way to magic loop to... Two sleeves and Beth said yes there is so she sat with me at the knitting store and um, we cast them on and I've knit like two and a half inches because mm -hmm. it's been hot and I don't <laughs> <laughs> excuse me folks we're gonna have to pause for a moment apparently my daughter needs toilet paper <laughs> we'll be right back yep and we're back so hello 
<laughs> Sorry for that. We had to take an emergency toddler potty break. So, um, so my other whip work in progress is my husband's sweater from Tin Can Knits. This is the flats in the worsted version. I finished the bottom of it last week. And then, was it Wednesday night? Saturday morning? Saturday. Saturday. Last Saturday. Last mm -hmm. Saturday. Beth helped me put um, my two sleeves on one long needle because I haven't done that before. Yep. So I actually got about <clears throat> two and a half inches of sleeves done. I need a lot more. I need six. That's what happens with man arms. And then, hmm. Hey, at least yours doesn't yours doesn't has have, have as long of arms as mine. Yes. But he and doesn't then, like sweaters. No, well, and <laughs> but Eric has big feet. Eric has very large feet, and I, I knit him very socks. Large feet. I haven't knit him socks in a while. I really need to. Which he's getting mad about. I know that. Yeah. I got he, your I got your back, Eric. Eric watches. He does. <laughs> <laughs> So. My little fun fact, my husband is Melissa's internet stalker. That's the running joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it started out, we were playing Farmville, so we friended each other, and then it's just been a running joke ever since then. He has. He's my internet stalker. He'll yeah. like anything anybody posts, because he's just that way. He's, he's he is, a likable he's guy. Very, he's very friendly. I yes. like Eric. Yep. Um, <laughs> but Eric's got big feet. My, no, Joe has size 10. <coughs> So, knitting him socks is not that bad. You're lucky. Yes. Yes. I'm very, very lucky that my husband has kind of smallish feet. Mm -hmm. It runs in his, his family. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't have to worry. And a size 10 is not too bad. No. It's not too bad to knit. Not at all. But. Yeah. So. And that's, um, for anybody who hasn't watched before, this is in the test designers. The color's not really picking up all the great. It's like a blue color. Uh, navy. Very pretty navy. Yeah, navy, and then like yeah. a, a really nice steel gray. Yeah. And the test designers. I'm hoping he likes it because it's his anniversary present. It's his anniversary present. If he doesn't like and, it, he's up the creek. And his Christmas <laughs> presents. His Christmas presents gonna be a different version. So if he doesn't like these sweaters, then you know whatever. Well, I haven't gotten Christmas presents in the last like three or four years. Join the club. I just buy what I want when I that's, want it anyway. But it, that's how we are. It's you know since my mom passed away, yeah, it's not a big deal. Well, last year I asked him to make me sewing pattern weights so mm. that I could like you know put them on the patterns when I cut the pattern out. Right. And he bought the stuff for them. And as far as I know, he made at least one prototype. I haven't seen him since. So. Go figure. I'm just going to save up and get some really, really fancy ones there you from go. Etsy. There you go. <laughs> so, what else have you got on the needles? Okay, so I'm also, I'm working on the Through the Loops Mystery Shawl by Kirsten Kapoor. Um, I'm really bad about buying the stuff for a mystery, getting really excited about the mystery, sometimes even starting the mystery and not finishing it, not keeping up with it. Just letting it fall by the wayside. So this year, one of my goals was to start and finish a mystery shawl. Yeah, and I've done goal. really well at keeping up with this one. Um, I've finished through Clue, clue 5. The last clue was um, released on Friday. Today is normally my day to knit on mystery projects, but I have other things to knit on today. But I will finish it um, this week sometime. And she's, and she's here with us today. I am. Um, and this bag is, um, this is from the project bag, who is Tiffany. She lives in, um, Southern Maryland. Oh, okay. Nice and close. But she is one of the other organizers of the Into the Wool nice. retreat. And she made this project bag for last year's Into the Wool retreat attendees. And then she had something happen with this bag. I don't know what it was, but she had like a, a flaw happen. So she offered it pretty inexpensively in her that's, Etsy shop. That's flawed? Yeah, it's somehow flawed. I think it's because it's got a double row of stitching. I'm not sure. If you're watching this, Tiffany, you can message me and tell me what the flaw is. But I got it pretty inexpensively, <laughs> and I like if it. If that's your flawed works, I can't even imagine <laughs> what your your yeah. regular work is like. Right. That's, that's yeah. craziness. So anyone that's doing this mystery... 
and is not to clue five. You might, if you don't want to be spoiled, you might want to turn your head look for away, a minute. Look, look away. away. All it's coming out. We, get, we only got 10 subscribers. I so know. Far. Wow. But later in life, there might be more. That's true. And, and, you know, I know. I'm going to be posting this on Beth, my I was going to say, Beth's going to share this, so I know we're going to get lots of viewers. <laughs> All right, so this I'm doing um, I using this. Malabrigo Machita. See, this is I, I knew because I love the yarn. Yep. It knew immediately. <laughs> this is Impressionist Sky colorway. Beautiful. They're, they they do blue so well. They do. They really hit the nail on the head with yep. blues. Yeah. And the then blues? it's a really fun pattern, but you have to pay attention to it. And then I've moved into the Frank Ochre colorway, which is one of my favorites. I love this mustardy, yellowy, greeny color. Yeah, it's just, it's, beautiful. it's a favorite of mine. But I realized recently, this is very navy looking. That's okay. I'm not a huge navy fan, but well, it's I mean, okay. You live, you live in Annapolis. I know, so I work can, in Annapolis. It's, we're working in Annapolis. Yeah, so... So this is through Clue 5, and I'm doing using my signature US 5 3.75 millimeter needles. So that's... I haven't actually seen you knit on that one. No, because I knit on this at home because I have to follow the chart. That's... It, that's Every single rare. row, even the wrong side rows, you have to follow the chart. Yeah, that's, that's rare for you to... It's the first time it's left my house. Not be able to knit something. I know. I know. So, um, my last FO. Do you want to wait until I pull mine out? Do you want me to? We'll do them together. Okay. We'll do, okay. <laughs> do them together. Go ahead. So, I'm also doing a test knit for Yoth and Caitlin Hunter. And I'm using Yoth Little Brother yarn, um, which is 80 merino, 10 cashmere, 10 nylon. And I'm using the ginger root color and the mango colorway. <laughs> and this is a fun it's fingering weight and this this is the test nut for Caitlin Hunter this is the Caitlin Hunter test nut yeah so we can't show you too much we can't give no I can show much. it oh okay. I, this I can show this you can show I can't okay. show the other one can't show <laughs> we can only show you like a swatch on the other one yeah so this one it's a boxy sweater have you seen oh you've you've seen the yeah seen the top look at that yeah so all that's left are the sleeves, and I'm about halfway done this sleeve. It'll have a little more color work on the end and of the it's sleeve. A cropped. It's a it's a um, boxy. Oh, it's a boxy. So yeah, and this is a okay. sample for the shop, yeah. so this isn't for me. Yeah, so it's been a lot of fun to net. Is there a is it just roll on the top or no? It gets a neck. It gets, it gets a um, a fairly wide rib neckline, fairly high rib neckline. So. So this one's been fun to knit. You worked on that ladder yesterday. Yes. Yeah, yesterday when I saw her at the shop, I don't think you. I finished. You, you I was hadn't still done working. The sleeves yet. No, I was still working on the front. <laughs> that was yesterday morning, guys. It's yeah. only twelve o'clock on a Sunday right now. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is living, believe it or not, it's living in this Teeny drawstring tiny. bag. Yeah. <laughs> from the scrappy thread, and the scrappy thread is. A really cool batter, or bag maker. She's on Etsy. Um, I love the twill. Yeah, she uses the twill. Um, twill tape, tape measure. Isn't that cute? Oh, yeah. And all of her oh, bags are made from scraps. From quilting. I love it. Yeah. So this is one of my favorites. But it holds a it lot. Match, and it, once again, it matches her project perfectly. So, true confession time. I have so many project bags that I can probably never duplicate using a project bag ever and still not use them all <laughs> it's sad it's very sad okay so my last ufo before the blankie is a test knit for andrea mowry <laughs> i love this this bag. is okay this bag i'll open it because i can't really show the inside but okay so this bag is by a bag maker in pennsylvania I'm um, called Tanny Casey, and she ideas. makes the best bags. Maybe it's a waxed it. canvas bottom, and then a nice heavy like canvas twill on the top. Tanny 
is a doggy. I have a cat, but I'm so much more of a dog person. Yeah. That's my husband's cat. Yeah. Well, cat. you know why I bought it? There's a bull terrier on here, and I used to have three bull terriers. So I had to get that back. Mm -hmm. But I have, I think, four or five of these bags. I love them. They hold so much. They're very sturdy. They're and very sturdy so well made. And she's, like I said, she's in Pennsylvania. And just really good. So what I can show you. Dun, da, da, da. I can show you the back. Oh, can't shake the camera. I was gonna try to do a drum roll. This is the beginning of the yoke. And that's the back side. And it's the back side of it. It is stuck in it. Or it's color work. It's stranded color work. Can you show your colors? Yeah, I'll show my colors. Her color choice is ready. And I'm using deep stash. Shh. For a change. That never happens. I always buy things for, for your oh. colors. No, I've got one more. Look at that. And this is the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Tweed. Yep. It's 100% um, wool. Yeah, it's, it's 80, not even merino. It's not super wash. Yeah, 80 Peruvian Highland wool and 20% Donegal tweed. tweed. Yeah. And this is the Down Heather colorway. Yep. And the, that's Dill I Pickle. I love this green Dill Pickle. Yep. It's a great color name. And Brass Heather. And Garnet Heather. It's so yeah. pretty. I love those colors. And I've had these in my stash for so many years. Yeah. And I'm glad that I'm using them now because I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of them. And this is actually um, the testing call that went out was for her Rhinebeck sweater. So this is my, this is one of my Rhinebeck sweaters also. My it's rose is my other these. Rhinebeck sweater. So hopefully Andrea and I will be twinsies at Rhinebeck. <laughs> so and it's been a lot of fun testing for her. She's I can't wait to go to Rhinebeck next year. Next year's my year. Next year my best friend and I turn forty and mm -hmm. we're going up there. We're taking a train. We're gonna Oh, we're gonna have so much fun. I can't wait. I can't yep. wait. So. Yep. I'm I went last year. I was sick, so I didn't have as much fun as I wanted to. Um and I'm going this year. Um Last year, actually, the week after Rhinebeck is SAF, which is the Southeast Animal Fiber Festival, or Fiber Fair, sorry, and it's down in Asheville, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. last year I went with a bunch of gals um, from Knits and Pieces um, that both work there and just are friends at the shop, and we all went down for SAF and had a great time, so for Rhinebeck, we're all doing Rhinebeck this year, so we've got a Airbnb, and we've got our tickets for Indie Untangled, so we're ready to go. And I think Fast Girl Speaks is going to be there. She's going to be at Needles Up. Needles I mean, up. she she goes to the festival, of course, but she'll yeah. be at the Needles Up show. That'll be nice. I yeah. Want, I need to get one of her project bags. Her project bags are so pretty. I didn't bring any of her bags. Yeah. I have a few. Yeah, <laughs> so my last FO, and or we waited to draw it out because it's I've been working on the blanket, you guys, the tent, the sail. The thing that cannot be killed. Um, I actually, even though it has been super hot, it's been really kind of rainy. So everybody's been inside. And I found a way to actually work on this without um, really having it on my lap too much. Because I'm just knitting on the corner right now. But I got, look how many squares I got done. You can barely see my pins. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight and a half squares on this side, and then I did two squares on this side, and so I did this one, and then I did a big four square block. So that's actually counts as four squares. It does. I count it as four squares. Yep. Because <laughs> it takes up four squares worth of spaces. And four squares worth of time. And four squares worth of time. Each one of these, and it takes me about a half hour. Oh, you're fast. Yeah, it takes me about a half hour to knit one square, and if I'm paying attention to it and I'm not talking to anybody, I can probably knock that down to 15 uh, like to 25 25 yeah minutes. I think it used to take me about 40 45 minutes a square yeah and these were I work on this on my very first pair of signature needles <laughs> um which I bought specifically for this blanket so this blanket's being knit on fingering weight with 3.25 millimeter needles 
and it is now larger than a king size. I'd say it's larger than a California king. Oh yeah. At this point, yeah. it's it's grown and stretched because mm-hmm. when I started it, I really wasn't keenly aware of how much superwash yarn grows. grows. It does. And so I'm hoping that when it's done, I can kind of throw it in the dryer and tighten it up a little bit. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So cool thing about signature DPNs, they sell them individually. They do. So I only have two of these. Yeah. And I have. So the I have two. Two sizes of DPNs in my stash, mm-hmm. and I have this two pair, and then I have two of the three point two five. Right. Um, I'm really glad that they sell them the, singly. No, I think I actually have them in a. I think I, my other size are green, so they're definitely not three point two five. I think they might be the three, two point green or two point two five. Yeah, they're the two point two five. Yeah, red or two point seven five. So yeah. So my other don't ask how I know these the things. other blanket. I told you she's a savant. The other blanket that I was knitting in fingering weight minis, uh, which I think I've since frogged. Oh really? I, I've since frogged the clown that barf one. one? Uh, yeah, the clown barf one was that was all rainbow minis. Every every mini was a rainbow. Um, that one got frogged a long time ago. Oh, okay. Because I just didn't have enough. And I wasn't buying as much clown barf yarn. Yeah. Um, but then I have like a neutrals one. Oh, that's right. <coughs> and then I got frog too. Um, because I was knitting it on 2.25s. It's awfully tiny. <laughs> because I'm insane. <coughs> and that one didn't have a designated size. So no. that one I could have knit to a certain size and stopped. Mm-hmm. This one has a designated size at this point, And I can't stop or it'll be yeah. wonky. Right. So. But I started this in 2000... You must have been 2010. 2010, I think. Yeah, that would be about right. Yeah. Eight years in the making. Eight years, guys. Eight years. This blanket has seen a lot. Mm-hmm. This blanket has seen three... Um, three knit in public days at the Mannings. Only three? I think it was only three. Okay. Um, because they closed down. Remember? Right. But I'm just trying to remember when they closed down and versus and when we stopped going and when yeah. we missed times going. Yeah, because there was at least one where we missed. Yeah. So we used to have this um, local. I say local. It's like an hour and a half away from us. It was up in um, East Berlin, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I think it was East Berlin. It was a knitting, spinning, weaving knitting school. Yeah. That also sold supplies, yeah. and they were on this absolutely gorgeous farm in the middle of nowhere, in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yep. And the first Sunday of our first Saturday of every August, yep. they would open up the shop and invite everybody to knit on their front lawn. Yep. Which was absolutely gorgeous because it had this little cusp of trees mm-hmm. that you could sit under and they had these little cute barn cats that would run around and try to steal everybody's food. She could bring food. You could literally sit there from the time they opened until the time they closed, which was all day. Yeah. And we would go every year and it was almost always beautiful weather. I mean, yeah, no matter how hot and humid and horrible it was here, it was we'd always... get up there and there'd be this beautiful breeze, Yeah. blue skies, except for that one year. But blue skies. Well, and we all and... fit inside the facility. Yeah, that's how big the facility yeah. is, guys. This yeah. this place was huge. There, two hundred of us would show up, and right. it rained, and uh, like one hundred and fifty of us decided to cram it into the store and knit, and yeah. there was plenty of room for right. us. We didn't even have to bring our chairs in. We didn't. They yeah. had enough they chairs had, and space. Yeah, for they everybody. had seating for everybody. It was crazy. I think the one year we sat it, twice. I think we sat inside. Because one year we I sat only remember at a table. sitting in once. I think the one at year a table. at the table, and then there was another when year. When it rained, the, yeah. you know, we were just there for the last hour and a half or so yeah. at the table. There was another year, I think, where it was raining most of the day. Oh, okay. And we were inside. I think Hero actually came with us on that. Maybe one. I didn't go that year. Maybe. Because I think I missed a year. Yeah. I think I missed the year that Hero left. Yeah, that might be it. Yeah. And uh, we sat inside in the weaving section. Right. So, yeah, yeah. It, it was a really great place. So I started my blanket 
before we started going there, but Beth yeah. started hers. I started mine at the Mannings. At the Mannings, because I encouraged two or three she people. She bullied me. <laughs> I got bullied. But I wasn't encouraged. Every... I was bullied. <laughs> I okay. I, no. I have no idea what you're talking about. You here's what hero? happened. Here's what no. Hero? Here's what happened. This I'm gonna tell hero. the true story. I feel, I'm totally innocent of this. We got to the Mannings. She pulls out minis and a set of DPNs and says, "Here, cast on 31 stitches." <laughs> like, what am I doing here? She made me do it, and then I couldn't stop. Because it's potato. And I think chippy. I knit. I think I knit ten squares that day. It's so potato chippy. Yeah. I'm trying to find my first square. And the great thing is, like, most of these are minis that, you know, we traded. We did all these swaps with people with. Oh, my God. That was a really fun experience, too, doing all these little mini swaps <laughs> and, and getting to know insane. other people. My first square. Okay. Was it? So, mine was started on August 6th, 2011. So, mine is seven years in the making. I have knit 800 of 1,008 planned squares. <laughs> so it's 80% done. Oh, yeah, 80% done. I made her drag it out, you guys. It's been an hibernation. It, no, it, it's been buried for buried. two years. The last time I worked on it was the 2016 Ravelinux. Wow. That was the last time I worked on it. It's the last time it was out of this bag. I don't even think they technically do the Ravelinux anymore. Yeah, they do. Do they? They do, but they don't do the modular. Oh, that's right. That's why I wasn't in it the yeah. other year. They didn't yeah. do modular. And that's that's yeah. the only com a, a event I competed in. Yeah. So mine is all scrappy. Mine has no color scheme whatsoever. It's just... Which I love. Whatever it wants to be. I recognize this one. <laughs> that's the fun part is going through and looking it's, and seeing. It is. It's the fun part of going through and looking like, oh, I recognize this yarn. Oh, yeah. I recognize that yarn. And so mine... Is and some of these yarns we both have in our blanket. Oh, yeah. That's the great part, too. Yeah, so this is my working end. I'm on the down slope. I'm doing mine completely corner to corner, and it's like I do by rows. Um, so I'm on the... It's as wide as it's going to be, and as long as it's going to be, and I'm just so finishing up the... Yeah, I'm decreasing. So this is kind of mine. Do, do, do. I love you guys. Hers is. There we go. There she's goes. a portion of it. There we go. That good? <laughs> that work? That works. Peekaboo. Oh. Hi. I see you. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a labor of love, that's for sure. Yeah. Yep. It's craziness. Yep. I love this. I and it lives it in, I'll show you where it lives. <laughs> in a 31 It lives large. in a big 31 large utility tote that says Knit Girl. <laughs> and is, of course, hot pink. She had it made just for this I bag. did. I did. <laughs> it's just, just for it's this blanket. Just for this blanket. It has a lid. You have a lot of ends to weave in, young lady. No, I just have ends to clip. And to clip, ooh, even They're better. They're already woven. They just have to be clipped. I actually managed to, um, I'm on the wrong side now. I've actually been weaving in my ends I've been, as I go and clipping. Mine yeah. hasn't had any celebrity hookups, so. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had a need to weave in. I this. really need to post that picture in, when I edit. I'll try to remember to post it here. But yeah, mine mine had a celebrity. I got to cuddle Jensen Ackles yeah. under my goal is like I wanna I wanna take it around to other cons and have it you know be snuggled with underneath um, other people. <laughs> there you go. I wanted to meet Misha and I wanted to meet um, David Tennant. David Tennant. Oh my God, that would be. I don't know that I would ever be. <laughs> he might have to have me. He knits, you know. He does. So does I think John Barrowman does too. Yeah. And I think Misha yeah. Collins knows how to knit. Really? Yeah, I think Misha knows how to knit because I think I've seen. It I haven't on seen his. it on his Instagram feed, but I think not. I've seen it on his. Um, Facebook page, but that might be his Instagram feed too, too. Gotcha. I don't know. So yeah, oh, one other thing about one. my signatures. Number one, mine are shorter. Yes. <laughs> Number two, one of them got lost. <laughs> it fell into an abyss. So I had to get it replaced. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but one is actually lighter. Yeah, they're two different colors. In tone than the other. 
think this is the original and this is the new one. Mm. So, but mine are shorter because I'm not doing any of the big I was going to say, you're not squares. doing any of the big squares. Yeah, I'm only doing 30, um, 30 stitch squares, yeah. 31 stitch squares. Yeah, so. those big squares take me at least an hour to make. Mm -hmm. And you would think, oh, well, you know, it, a, such a small project or it's such a small section of these would, you know, but they do take a long time. I don't know why. They do. And it's not like it's an intricate pattern. And we, we're using the um, Shelly Kang pattern. Not, yes. I know a lot of people use the new Memory Makers or... Cozy Memories. Cozy Memories. We're using yeah. the Shelly Kang pattern, yeah. the, which is 31 stitches. The OG pattern. Is it the OG? I don't know. I don't I know. Think, it's I, like, what I like to think of it as. I feel like it is, but I don't know. Oh, and my, my um, blanket met the yarn heart on it. It did. It did. It met the yarn heart. And she posted. She blog posted yep. about it. Yep. So she if you like it. YouTube, if you Google search Yarn Harlot, Baltimore, and Sock Blanket, I think I come up on one more of her posts. Mm -hmm. And it's yep. about five years old because Nora was just born when I went to see Yeah, you and Tracy, Tracy went. Mm -hmm. so. yep. And it wasn't even like, I don't think I'd finished the green section when I met her. I think I, I just started either. the green section when I met yeah. her. So we have quite a, quite a bit of... Um, progress since I've met I keep meaning to like when I finish it I want to take a picture and send it to her because she still blogs mm -hmm. not that I've really paid attention lately I I, I follow her on Instagram I and do she's, I, yeah I follow her on Instagram she's um very much into being a grandma which is great I know and very much into bicycling yeah so yeah she's uh, I feel like she's an OG podcaster but she didn't really podcast she no blogged. yeah but she's a writer that's what she does yep so i love all her books mm -hmm. she's got a great sense of humor yeah for sure so if you ever need a a good book to read yarn harlot has got some really great it, they're they're short stories like I, the last one i have of hers is the one that was short stories that isn't really um knitting content related mm -hmm. at all it's but it's not really a self-help book either. It's just a book about life. Oh. Yeah. And my favorite, though, my favorite story, and this is the one that she actually read while we were there, was about the skunk that got into her house. Oh. And, you know, her and her husband are vegetarian. Oh, that's right. So killing the skunk was... No or, bueno. in, or injuring the skunk right. was no bueno for them. And... Um, and... Doing a humane trap for a skunk it's is not the really, really hard smartest to do. thing in the world. Yeah, it's really, really hard to do. Oh. And apparently, if you you have to relocate them within mm -hmm. a certain distance, because if you don't... They'll come back. No, no, not even that. They will kind of like lose their minds, so to speak. Eh. Yeah, so she talked about that in the story, and <laughs> because she called animal control... Um, wow. But it got under her porch. It got under the porch. Oh, no. <laughs> and so, and I don't think they have AC. Mm -hmm. So, and they're in their big, huge Victorian Toronto city home. I don't think they have AC. So, they sleep with the windows open at night. <laughs> she said, I didn't know a stench could wake you from your sleep. <laughs> oh. So, it was, it, yeah. It's a great, and the way she told it, not yeah. just writing the writing was amazing but the way she read it yeah was really incredible and she's she's really if you ever get a chance to read one of her books or go see her she's really really good speaker i, I love listening to her talk and cool. i think she does audio versions of her books i think mm. i could be wrong i've never looked yeah it's been a while interesting. since i've been in there so. interesting i do not have any stash acquisition so i'm going to sit back and knit and let beth talk about all her stuff stash acquisitions right. and move like curiously through her well first i'll talk about my needle adjacent which are stash enhancements also um <clears throat> my august desert vista dye work socks so desert vista dye works owner susan she's also a walking dead fan and she loves zombies and she has a whole plethora of zombie related colorways that are inspired by other things one year she typically during the walking dead season she'll pick a theme um to release zombie type color she calls them her zombody colorways 
Um, one year she did Disney princesses, which was lots of fun. And then she did Disney villains. And this past year for the first half of, um, or for all of, um, the walking dead, she did the hundred acre wood. <laughs> so I've already knit with Zampu, but I just got an order from her recently and I ordered Zom piglet, Zom tigger and Zom Eeyore. Thank you and for remembering. <laughs> Eeyore was my daughter's favorite. He's my favorite. Tigger's mine, but Eeyore was my daughter's favorite when she was growing up. So I will be knitting Zom Eeyore. And I don't have it with me, but there's a um, polymer clay um, maker that does progress keepers and stitch markers that are Winnie the Pooh character bums. So I have Eeyore's rear end as I've a stitch it. marker I've seen for it. this. It's and adorable. it's the my beloved Adoria is the um, the maker. So I have Pooh's bum, I have Piglets, I think I have Piglets, mm -hmm. and I have Eeyore's. Yeah. And I told her that I need Tigger. She's like, Tigger's coming. So <laughs> she's the one that I got my yep. Yep. my stitch your pussy hat. Yep. yep. And my um labyrinth. Yep. Hello. And I think I got one more. Did I get one more? I feel I like remember. I got one more. Could be. I don't remember. Oh. I have a terrible So memory. many I so much terrible. bling, so little time. <laughs> so I also fun. mentioned with the Desert Vista Dye Works, the knit along, that they're definitive prizes. So for the first three months that you participate, for each month you get 10% off of your next order. So after three months, if you do all three months, you get a 30% off coupon code. So I tend to, twice a year I get those coupon codes, so I tend to make decent size orders because you basically are getting free yarn yeah. at that point. 30% is a, is a good discount. That's a good discount on yarn. Um, you know, 10%, it doesn't seem like much, but 30%, that's a, that's a good discount. Yeah. And then at the six month mark, if you've done from January through June, you get a free skein of yarn, your choice of any of her active colorways. Um, she does have some retired colorways, which upsets me greatly because she's done an If They Kill series related to The Walking Dead. <laughs> And every time a character is killed, so is the yarn. So it goes into retirement. Oh no. And I would I would kill for Abraham and Glenn. <laughs> I stopped watching a right around that season because yeah. emotionally I can no longer take the show. Like right. I'm still hashtag triggered over Glenn's death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Abraham was he's like throwing up the peace sign. Yeah. So her issue is it was it was rough oh, it was rough yeah and my husband came in and he found me in my room watching it and he knew what was coming apparently i was avoiding all the spoilers but he right. came in afterwards and he saw me and he's like are you okay and i'm literally hugging my pillow rocking Aww. back and forth going, i'm not Aww. okay <laughs> this is not okay and he's like you know they're fake characters right and i was like doesn't matter doesn't matter they're real <laughs> you know, doesn't hey, matter. We won't even go into Sookie and Eric. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's a sore spot for me. That's a sore spot. Thank God they live on in fan fiction. That's all <laughs> I have to say. Yes, I do still See, avidly I, read fan fiction. I feel that way about uh, the Tenth Doctor and mm -hmm. Rose. Yeah. Like that will be my favorite. Like I cannot not watch that. Right. of those two characters and yeah. not cry and then you watch even though uh the 10th doctor and donna were only ever friends they were best friends and her ending is so sad and so mm -hmm. just emotional and i just still i can't watch the end of the episode and yeah. then you know yeah her grandfather's going i'll look up in the sky every night and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> ugly crying every yeah. time every time so That's how it is It'll always be that way. It's like watching, um, oh, what was that movie? My Girl. Oh my God. Oh. I watch My Girl every time it comes on, and every time she breaks down and starts crying, you can't see what all those clothes are. I lose it all over again. Mm -hmm. Like I've watched it for the first time. 
And I think I cried hysterically during, um, during one of the, um, is it Mockingjay? Oh, the Hunger Games. The Hunger Games series, but I, I can't haven't remember. watched. I haven't read the books and I haven't watched the movies. Okay, so I won't. There's. I'm a. I'm a really bad fandom person. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I own them. When they came out, when the I movies came out, them. I read the books. When the movies came out, I was really, really excited because they cast Lenny Kravitz as Cinna, and one, mm-hmm. I loved Cinna's character, and two, I. Oh my God. You adore Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz. I would throw just about anybody under a bus. To get my hands on Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> I am no shame. He is such a beautiful man. <laughs> so, so pretty. Um, and when they announced that he was going to play Sinnoh, I was like, oh, I got all over clumped. I was like, oh. And then, you know, I won't ruin it for you if you ever read it, but like something happens to his character, yeah. basically. And I lost it. Yeah. My, hus- my husband's like, do you need a moment the first time I watched it? And I was like pre pregnancy. Oh, wow. No, no, I was post post pregnancy. I just oh. had my daughter, mm. and my father in law invited us over to watch it. And so my daughter was a couple months old, and we were watching on pay per view because my mm-hmm. father in law is very old fashioned, and he still watches things on pay per view, <laughs> which I find <laughs> so adorable. <laughs> I keep trying to explain to my daughter when they go when she goes over there, they don't have Wi Fi. Mm-hmm. They have internet, but they don't have Wi Fi. They're they're still I oh, they're you on. have to plug in. <laughs> they, yeah, their computer plugs in. <laughs> To the Wi-Fi. And Who in think, this day and age doesn't have Wi-Fi? I know, right? Your parents. And my parents have it. My in-laws don't. Oh, your in-laws. My in-laws. My dad. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. My dad has not had internet, has not not had internet in our home since 1989. Wow. We, I was literally the first person I ever knew to have the internet. Public, my goodness. Like, like Publicly, mm-hmm. I guess, right. is what you would say, like, mainstream. We had a, I was the first person on our block to have it. My dad is self-taught in computers and loves computer forensics and all the, you know, nerdy computer stuff. So he was always on the cutting edge of, of computer technology. And we had, we were the first people I had. We, we had it back when it was stuff like Prodigy. Yeah, we had, we had an old AOL. Yeah, and you didn't but, get on the internet like it is now. Where no, you log was, in, you type in a website. Yeah. It was boards. You yeah. logged into your internet oh, yeah. provider, right? And then you you chatted on the boards and and all that. And yeah, so we but had, see, with us, yeah. we didn't have a local access phone number. Yeah. So it long was distance. long distance. You were paying a long distance fee yeah. to dial into this number, and that lasted for maybe two months. Yeah. And then my mom was like, "What is this?" <laughs> What is so, this sorcery that is costing us an arm and a leg? And it was my dad more than me. Yeah. My dad was the one that was playing on the internet, not me. Well, it was such a new thing. Yeah. It was so cool. It was when he loved computers anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was a cop for years, but then he I became remember, yeah. computer guy. I mean, I, growing up, we had a Commodore 64 in our house. I mean, we had computers before that, but that was the first one I really remember. Mm-hmm. And my brother learned to type out CPOMP commands before he could even oh, yeah. read. Yeah. <laughs> So we had a, we had the Radio seven. Shack version. We had the color computer because my dad, when he retired from the police force, he went to work for Radio Shack's computer center. Nice. So we always had the newest and greatest Tandy version of everything. I have a picture. We had a picture of my dad, and I don't know if it survived the fire or not. Mm-hmm. It's probably scanned somewhere. Right. My, my parents had a pretty bad fire a couple mm-hmm. years ago when they lost everything. But we had this computer of my dad from, like, the 70s, and he's got the... The hair that goes, <laughs> kind of hair, and, uh-huh. but he's sitting in front of a Wang computer. It is so old, and it is such a retro picture. It is, mm-hmm. it, it is the most amazing picture. Right. So hopefully it was scanned somewhere on the hard drives. Cause Too we funny. Had, we didn't manage to save a lot of family photos, yeah. actually. Right. Through luck. Yeah. And the use of technology because my mom Thanks. scanned a lot of things and uploaded them to our cloud very good so but you guys are here for the yarny goodness aren't you you are <laughs> nerdy goodness <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna we, put us right back onto track <laughs> we got off track it's that's okay, okay. Yeah, it's that's okay. how we are we were talking yesterday about this and we're like this is gonna be a long podcast it's gonna be a long podcast i think we're we're definitely over an hour yeah now. that's okay that's okay they like us that's, yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> i'm also doing the last Camp Loopy of the year um, for August. And the challenge this month is the theme has been like cowboy western theme. 
<clears throat> the challenge for this month was something relating to a Western TV show or movie or book or something like that. Anybody that knows me knows I don't like Westerns at all. And Not she doesn't all. like Fireflies, so she doesn't like Cowboys in Space either. No. No. The closest I'm go the closest <laughs> is the movie Space Cowboys. With Tommy Lee Jones and Donald Sutherland that's and Clint not, Eastwood. And... That's not even close. Hey. <laughs> it's the closest I get. So, me being what I am and who I am and thinking and thinking. And I'm like, hey, in Westerns, you don't want to get caught in the crossfire of a gunfight, right? Right. So there's this great um, mosaic pattern called crossfire. Clever. That Mary from the Cherry Pearls podcast did several years ago, and I fell in love with her version of it. So I'm like, I'm going to do this crossfire pattern. And it's by Jennifer DeSalle. And I ordered Hedgehog Fiber Sock Yarn in these two gorgeous colors. I love that rust. This is called Rusty Nail. And it's a beautiful, beautiful orangey, rusty color. Yeah. And this one is Juniper. And I don't know if it's going to pick up the really pretty rust that's in there. But it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous color. So this will be in the background. And this will be like the... Main color. The, well, it's, this is the main color. It's, it's one of those where it kind of crisscrosses over, kind of like the Yonda window. Gotcha. So these will be cast on sometime in August and finished sometime in August. So that was fun. And then never wanted to pass up a good knit along. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. I, um, I heard on or read on um, Andrea Mowry's or no, Caitlin Hunter, sorry. Caitlin Hunter's um, Instagram that she's coming to Ryan Beck and she's partnering up with Farmer's Daughter um, fibers and they're doing a knit along for Rhinebeck where if you knit one of Caitlin's patterns using Farmer's Daughter yarn and then you track one of them down during the weekend they'll give you this really cool pin love enamel pins who doesn't who doesn't and Caitlin I don't know if you've seen her Tecumseh sweater that she knit or that she designed, but it's really cute. And she came up with an enamel pin that's Willie Nelson wearing a Tecumseh sweater. And it says, I really love knitting. <laughs> I must have oh this enamel my pin. God, that's the greatest thing it ever. must be in my life. He's got his braids. It's really cute. Oh. So, of course, I jumped on to Farmer's Daughter's website. Of course. And and I also looked through Caitlin's um, patterns. And I, you know, I was like, I'm going to already have the Rhinebeck sweaters. I'm going to already have a shawl because, of course, I've joined another knit along that Christy Glass is doing for the Unicorn County shawl. I already pre-ordered my yarns for that. And, you know, so I'm like, what do I need? Oh, I could do a hat. Mm. And Caitlin has some beautiful hats. So I bought this skein of Farmer's Daughter Squish Worsted. It's 100% Superwash Merino. Beautiful. In the Golden Triangle colorway. And it's got some beautiful tonal sections in there. And it's so soft and squishy. Ooh. What's the one at the moment now? No. That is Golden Triangle. Yep. I've never, uh, I've never heard of Farmer's Daughter. They have it at uh, the Knot House. Do they have it mm -hmm. at the Knot House? Oh. Yep, yep, Knot House has it. The Knot House. The not Knot the, House. Not the Tangled. No, game. not the Tangled Knot. Not the Tangled Knot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> and the geography is the funny part of it because there was, there used to be a shop called the Tangled, a Tangled Skein. Yes, in Hyattsville. In see, Hyattsville, see. which is outside of DC. Okay, <laughs> the Knot House is in Frederick, which is like near Pennsylvania. Yes, <laughs> not even close. They're not even close. Not even However, close. at least there was at, at one point a store called 
the Tangled Skein near us, ish adjacent. I used to shop there. I did. I've been to the Tangled Skein. Yeah. I, I was there once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah, but they closed down a while. So back. yeah, you know, yeah. at least I have an excuse. I have yeah. some, something. Yeah. And then. I am such a dismissive. <laughs> You guys, I want this one so bad. So, Casapinka. She's, she's going to have to really seriously watch her basket when we pack up the car. <laughs> so, Casapinka has had this new mystery coming out called The Crown Wolves. And everybody's been coming up with these yarn sets because it uses 12 different colors mm-hmm. of yarn in a very small quantity. So everybody's been dying kits for it, but Miss Babs is the one that was her yarn support originally. And Miss Babs, you know, the original one was beautiful, but then she came out with one called a Malfi Coast. And this thing, I saw it, and look at these colors, you guys. I was just floored. I don't think the camera does it justice. It doesn't. I'll send you a picture. Yeah, we'll, we'll post a picture from the website. I had dreams about these yarns. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't not order it. And I kept going back and forth with, do I really want to do this? You know, if it's, I don't like it, I've got all these, like, small amounts of yarn. It's not like just buying, like, three skeins of yarn that I could use in something else. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, but I've never seen a Casapinka pattern I don't like. So it was, it became a no brainer for me (laughs) and I ordered it and I got it and I want it so bad, but again, it's a shawl and I just won't wear it and it will go to waste. I can't wait to knit this. Once my, um, once my through the loops mystery is done, this one's getting cast on because it is, it is me. Even it does, it doesn't have any pink in it. I know. But it's still beautiful. Those colors just sang to me that just, orange and teal oh, yeah and, i was gonna say that coral color yeah and, the, teal and the, is, the aquas and the greens oh, can't wait to knit it is that it that's all i'm showing yeah that's all i brought with that's, me that's all i mean i got a lot at home but i didn't want to like be here for five hours either yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think beth texts our group like every other day <laughs> i've got squishy mail <laughs> And we're like, ooh, show us the pretties. Yeah. We all live vicariously through Beth. Yeah. I'm also a master enabler. So I'll see something and be like, ooh, I think everybody needs this. Yes. Yes. I yeah. can't, um, can't count the number of times Beth has posted, hey, Missy, I think you'll like this one. Or, hey, <laughs> Jess, this is your colors. Yeah. So you got a calcifer. From my beloved That's Adorio, it. it was calcifer. Calcifer was my third <laughs> one. I knew I got it. <laughs> And Nora keeps trying to steal it. She can't have it. Because she knows. So my daughter gets um, babysat by one of our good friends, Jess. And Jess's favorite um, Studio Ghibli is Howl's Moving Castle. And she loves Calcifer. And I like Calcifer. Howl's Moving Castle is one of the few um, animes that I actually like. And so now Nora has claimed Calcifer as her favorite too. So... (laughs) She keeps trying to steal my little calcifer, so I'm going to have to get her something with calcifer on it. I think backstitch, be tough. backstitch Fabrics is supposed to come out with some calcifer there fabric. Because I, I added Jessica to the group just so she could get that fabric. Because <laughs> <laughs> they have a panel that says, May all your bacon burn. Which is a curse he throws on one of the characters. <laughs> I think it's amazing. This might as well be Greek. I know, I know. <laughs> she doesn't want to watch anime. My daughter either. was a serious anime fanatic. Um, I'm not. I, I really Pokemon like... Pokemon is like as close as I got to it. Yeah. And, and I'll do... Like I ordered from um, from London House Yarns recently. I bought a skein of yarn called Gotta Catch Them All. It's a Pokemon <laughs> reference, but I'll knit socks for Samantha. Yeah. That's And that's probably what she'll get for Christmas. Honestly, I think, I, I think Pokemon I tolerate because my daughter loves it. And um, I loved Avatar. And I love Hell's Moving Castle. And... Totoro, but that's about it as far as anime. Yeah, like my daughter's she, still, anime. she's 25 and she's still into anime. She likes the convention. She likes. My husband's 38 and still watches yeah. it. And he lost his his mind. We have Amazon Prime and they recently put their anime 
line all on Amazon Prime for free because it was an extra channel that you had wow. to purchase. It was like anime extra or something, mm. something like that. And we were paying for it, and then they made it free. And he was like, yay, because he was about ready to cancel it because he'd gone through and pretty much watched everything that he liked. Right. Um, and then he didn't want to ma- waste money on things that he wasn't going to like, and then they made it free. So That's he great. So he was excited, so he watches Wonderful. it all the time. Cool. Uh, just a reminder, folks, that we have our 100 subscriber giveaway. You have to watch episode two and comment with the comment hashtag unicorn boogers for the giveaway because that is the name of the colorway. I'm going to win it because I need a second skein of it. Yeah, she said she bought it. Yes. Oh, did Beth has personal <laughs> yarn shoppers. I do. And if anyone and wants to be my personal <laughs> yarn shopper, I do send PayPal very quickly. You will be still in the store and get the PayPal. <laughs> I, I I went all the way to Florida and I went to this amazing yarn store in Florida called the Four Pearls Yarn Shop. That was my first time being Beth's personal without shopper. me asking. Without her asking. Yeah. Well, usually because you're with me when I buy. Well, yarn. that's true. Usually yeah. Beth is with me when I buy yarn. I get a random text one. <laughs> and I sent her a picture of Emma's. Em- Emma's crazy or Emma's. What? Her beautiful yarn, I think the crazy beautiful yarns of crazy. base oh, okay. is one of the bases. Gotcha, gotcha. Four Pearls, their daughter, the a shop owner's daughter, Emma, is she's like 16, mm-hmm. and she dyes the most beautiful yarn you have ever seen. Yep. And they do sell it online. It's the Four Pearls, I think, dot com. I mm-hmm. think it's the name of the shop. I'm not 100% on that, but I'll put it at the scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Um, but Emma's yarn's absolutely beautiful, and they had a color called Zombie something. What was the name of that yarn? No, it was a unicorn one. Was it a unicorn it, one? It was a unicorn Unicorn Tears, one. maybe? Yeah, it was Unicorn Tears. Yeah. I know. I think the Unicorn Tears is a different brand. I th- oh, was think that a different zombie, brand? I think the Zombie Oh, that's right. The... Yeah, I just told you to pick whatever you wanted of the Emma's yeah. for me. I mean, I you can't go wrong with me. Emma's yarn. She's got some beautiful ones. <clears throat> Um, but I'll post, I'll post some pictures I, of, of what I'd gotten there. Yeah. And I texted Beth cause it was pink. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said, do you want, and she said, yes. And then I texted her another one later on and I said, do you want, she goes, yes. And then she's like, all right, what's my damage? I'm like, send her the no- amount. She didn't even question it. She's like, here you go. <laughs> PayPal. She, I had the PayPal in my account before I even got to the register to pay for it. And with the unicorn boogers one, I had jury duty that day. She did. And so I got managed. out of jury duty, and I turned on my phone, and I see the text, and I'm like, yes, please. And I was like, good, because I already bought it for you, because <laughs> I'd already gone in and out of the shop. Yeah. So it's a good thing I know your taste. So, yeah. It's not hard to figure it's out. It's not hard to figure out. With As I've taste, said in but... swaps, I've never met a color I didn't like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we, um, but Beth has, has... Purchasers all over the country. I do. I do. <laughs> I've even had them. Rivalry. I've had people buy for me at Stitches Midwest mm-hmm. because you You've know had people buy for you in other countries. That that's true. I have. Yeah. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Because people know Beth. And, well, well, you know, it's I like what I like, and I really what I love is getting something that's like a limited edition type of a thing. Yeah. Because I like to have what others don't have. <laughs> I'm individual that way. Yeah. That's just how I am. But uh, yeah, so uh, 100 subscribers is the goal and when we get to 100 when we get to 100 subscribers um I'm going to have the giveaway for the stitches together unicorn boogers game. Mm-hmm. Absolutely gorgeous game of soft yarn. And all you have to do is go to episode 2 comment on there hashtag unicorn boogers and hopefully watch it and uh, if you guys like this episode please give a like and a subscribe we greatly appreciate it we're into double Oops. digits now yay <laughs> hopefully we'll get there soon yep. rather than later um hoping having beth on there uh, on here will help <laughs> so my i'm gonna guest. i'm gonna pimp the podcast She's out on my uh, my instagram yeah I have one or two followers. And I do have a plan <laughs> to have some other special guests on um, over the next couple months. And we'll probably have Beth back 
at some point. Always happy to come back. Yeah. This is fun. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.